Greetings, brothers and sisters. Hello and welcome back to Eva's House of Spirit. It's been a little bit, but here I am again. For those of you who are not familiar with this channel, I'm Eva. And this video is going to be a VR to Taliesin McKnight. He just released a video called Sigil Magic, Spells for Love, Money and Happiness, Chaos Magic Spell Essentials. And I thought his video was really, really cool. He shared one method of sigil creation. It's one that is, I think, fairly well known. It is fairly simple as well. And it's one that I've covered before in my Mirror Magic series, where I talked about how to seal magic mirrors in the way that I suggested utilizing mirrors for magical amplification between this plane and the astral plane. So I will be linking his video in the description of this one for those of you who may not see. Oh my God, I can't even speak. I will be linking his video in the description of this one for those of you who may not have seen that video. It's really worth a watch. But in this video, I'm gonna show you another method for sigil creation utilizing the Western alphabet and planetary squares. The reason I chose to use the Western alphabet is that I'm betting that most of you who are watching are not extremely well versed in the more traditionally used Hebrew alphabet. Traditionally, a lot of practitioners, when they use this method, they will utilize the Hebrew alphabet. Please remember that there are also various ways to create sigils. This is only one way. If this method does not resonate with you, you can always use a different method. Also, I wanted to definitely touch upon the fact that in the course of this video, I did use the phrase, we have to, but I would like you to please take note that I did not mean that as in we have to or else. <clears throat> I didn't want to imply that this is only, like, this is the only way because it's not the only way. Instead, I ask you to take that we have to phrase as we next have to do the following step in working this particular process if we are following this particular process in the way that I am presenting it. I really didn't mean to imply that this is the only way to do this or this is the correct way or any anything like that. If you feel the need to tweak aspects of this method, do what you need to do. If a certain tweak seems to work better for you in this sigil creation process, by all means, do pursue that, okay? <clears throat> now that said, different planets are associated with different things. If you're not already fairly well versed in planetary associations, I do suggest that you watch my latest video for the Biophilic Alternative in which I spoke about celestial astral magic. In that video, I shared some planetary correspondences and I also show you in that video the planetary squares for each of the seven originally known planets that are most traditionally worked with in planetary magic. I'll have a link to that video also in the description of this one. In this case, I'm going to be using prosperity work as an example. Therefore, we're going to be focusing on the planetary square of the sun because the example I'm going to give you it relates to solar influences or energies or associations. You know, prosperity falls within the realm of the sun's planetary influence. Now you'll notice that this square is numbered 1 through 36. This matters 
in the conversion of intention or names into a sigil that is created using this planetary square. Different planetary squares are numbered to different extents depending on the numerology that is linked with the planet. Now the first step in creating a prosperity sigil utilizing this particular method of working with planetary squares is to identify an intention. I think that's pretty universal to sigil creation in general but again the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify what it is we want. So we're going to create a statement of intent and then we're going to simplify that statement of intent and then we're going to convert the letters that we arrive at into numerical values and the statement that we are going to be working with in this example for this tutorial is going to be I am prosperous. So we have I am prosperous. The first step in reducing this intention down to something workable is to remove the vowels. Now the second thing that we're going to have to do, of course, is to remove any repeating letters. And once we have done that, in this case we see that we are left with four letters. M, P, R, and S. But the next step requires us to convert these from letters into numerical values. Now here is a chart of letters that are ascribed numbers. Once we have whittled down our intention into a few basic letters, now we have to select on this chart the numerological equivalent to those letters. Now we saw that the square of the sun only goes up to 36. So in this case we had our intention whittled down to M, P, R, and S. However, because the square only goes up to 36, we have to omit some zeros, simplify the numbers, so that we can utilize these letters on the planetary square of the Sun. So then M goes from 40 to 4, P goes from 70 to 7, R goes from 90 to 9, and S goes from 100 to 10. The final step in creating our sigil is to take the numerical values we have now arrived at and trace the figure of the sigil on the planetary square. Your beginning point in this method will always be a circle. Your ending point will always be a vertical line. This is something that you will notice when looking at certain sigils in old literature that deals with this sort of subject. You will notice that sigils some of them will have that little circle and then that little line. That shows you how to read the sigil and it'll kind of clue you in as well uh, in terms of what planetary square was used to create it because if you were to impose that sigil onto the different planetary squares eventually you'd arrive at the one that it was created on and you would then be able to decipher the values and therefore the letters that that sigil was created from. But anyway, I'm kind of going in another direction. So yes, you would put a circle in the square that begins with 4. And that's where M was. It was converted into 4. And then we are going to draw a line from that circle beginning at 4 to the 7, which is the numerical value that P was reduced to, and then from 7 we're going to continue the line down to 9, which is what R was reduced to, 
and then we're going to continue the line to 10, which is what S was reduced to. And then we're going to put the little vertical line signifying the end of the intention on the planetary square of the sun. So this is what the intention of I am prosperous looks like on the planetary square of the sun. This is what it looks like in sigilized form. One thing that I do want to interject here, one thing I want to add in here too, is that you don't just have, uh, you don't, how can I say it? You need not only work intentions into sigils, you can work names into sigils. I did mention this in my video for the biophilic alternative that I referenced earlier. In that video, I mentioned that, you know, or I read from Majin Gonzalez Whipler's book, I read out um, what she said about how if you're going to do a work that involves a person that you would like to influence in a particular way, you can simplify their name, convert it to, you know, convert the simplified letters into numerical values and then work those into sigils utilizing planetary squares and then you can use those sigils in your work to influence that individual in a particular way. Now that we've created our sigil as I have shown you, we can work it in any number of ways. Tallison did a great job in his video of speaking on how one might work with a sigil once it's created. So I do, again, suggest that you do go and watch his video, not just to see the method that he shares with you, that um, maybe not everybody is necessarily familiar with, but also pay attention, I suggest, to what he says on how you might work with sigils. Finally, I'd like to say that I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's, you know, taught you something you might not already know. And I do always welcome comments. I always say this if you have any questions, thoughts, feelings, anything you'd like to share or add, hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to address those. Um, and I also... I think it's important that, that viewers do comment because it does spark discussion and discussion is, I feel, a powerful avenue of, you know, learning, exchange, growth, you know, it can facilitate learning exchange or, or it can, exchanges of, you know, in discussion can facilitate learning and growth is what I meant to say. So that said, I'm going to wish you blessed be an Ashe. You have a wonderful day, and until next time, until our next exchange, you stay awesome, and bye-bye for now.